Good afternoon. I am calling to order our regularly scheduled meeting of the Intergovernmental Relations Committee and our first meeting of 2017. My name is Elizabeth Glidden. I'm the chair of this committee and I'm joined today by Council Members Fry, uh, Council President Johnson and Council Member Andrew Johnson. And we are a quorum of the committee and able to do business. We have um, three items on our agenda for today. The first um, is a resolution supporting the resettlement of Syrian refugees in Minneapolis and the state of Minnesota. And I didn't know, Mr. Ranieri, if you wanted to say anything, and then I think we might have a guest here who would make a very brief comment, so. Madam Chair, I wasn't intending to say anything, but I know I think Councilmember Gordon may join us too. Okay, all right. And um, yes, and so thank you for that. This had come forward um, uh, via Councilmember Gordon. And I know that he had uh, worked with um, some folks from Amnesty International to uh, identify uh, language for this resolution. And I understand we have a guest here today. Uh, why don't you come forward and you can introduce yourself and maybe make a uh, some brief comment on why you think this resolution is important. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yes, my name is Aaron Tovo, and I'm the Minnesota Area Coordinator for Amnesty International, which is a volunteer position. I kind of act as a liaison for coordinators throughout Minnesota with AI staff. And this is um, um, a campaign, part of a campaign that's actually going on nationwide, so other cities are also going to be considering it. And in fact, St. Paul has already passed a very similar resolution. Um, so, but basically the, um, the point is that um, there's a, as I'm sure you're all aware, that there's a serious uh, refugee crisis with Syrian refugees and um, many of them are coming to the United States. Not a lot are coming to Minnesota, but, um, but some are. And we wanna make, uh, make sure that they're welcome here in the Twin Cities. Um, and um, this, although it's somewhat symbolic uh, because the numbers of Syrian refugees are relatively small here. This also has an impact on refugees and immigrants in general, for them to know that we've got their back, that Minneapolis, it's a statement of values of Minneapolis. And um, uh, as the International Institute of Minnesota's Jane Groutman made, made the point that this makes all refugees feel safer here. Um, so, um, so th that's kind of the main thing. Also, um, in light of Trump's recent election and the amount of anti-immigrant and anti-refugee rhetoric that's been happening nationwide, this is also a chance for Minnesota to assert its values. Um, and it's not just Amnesty International. Uh, we have uh, several organizations that have signed on with this resolution and they're included in, in the resolution itself in boldface. Um, those include the International Institute of Minnesota, Arrive Ministries, the United Nations Association of Minnesota, the American Refugee Committee, the Minnesota Council of Churches, and the Center for Victims of Torture, all of which deal directly with refugees in one capacity or another. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time to come here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and move this uh, item just so that it's formally before us. And I know Councilmember Gordon, who has authored, uh, chief author of this resolution, has joined us. And I'll just ask if anybody would like to make any comment. Anything? You don't have to, but <laughs> I want to. Well, I just okay. want to say thank you to the committee for taking this up, and also thank you for the uh, advocates for bringing it forward. When I saw St. Paul passing this, it seemed like something we could do. It is symbolic, it is a gesture, but I also think it's in keeping with um, um, many other things we've been doing, and certainly the kind of city we want to be for you know, for people. Thank you, Council Member Gordon. Council President Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Council Vice President, myself, uh, uh, attended the Chamber of Commerce dinner last night, and the governor spoke and he talked about the demographics of our state and the challenges that we face with uh, finding employees uh, for, for our communities and talked about being uh, welcoming uh, to uh, immigrants to our um, uh, state and how we, it isn't just that it's a good a gesture, it's a necessity. And um, I thought he was really strong in his remarks. Um, but uh, you know, as, as someone who grew up in this community when it was very, very, uh, 
uh, white and what somebody said what the biggest fights used to be again the uh, uh, Norwegians versus the the Swedes <laughs> uh, uh, it, it just it's so different it's so different now but we've benefited so much from um, the immigration that we've had in our in our state and it's changed us very much but it's changed us for the better and and uh, so I I'm happy to support this today thank you um, I'm not seeing any other comments. So on the resolution before us on approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And that item is approved. Thank you very much. Next, we have a adoption of some additional updates to our 2017 legislative agenda. And I'm not sure if Mr. Ranieri is leading off or Ms. Lesh. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Um, what you have before you is uh, our most recent update to the city's 2017 legislative agenda and uh, policy positions. Most of the updates that you see today are uh, technical in nature, uh, some formatting and linguistic changes. Um, for the sake of time, I did just want to highlight and spend a moment um, to point out one particular item and then entertain questions from the committee. Um, if you look under the section entitled Public Safety and Criminal Justice Reform, you'll see uh, a new statement, um, and I'll read it for the record for those who are, are, uh, are watching at home. Uh, the city supports legislation and policies that reduce the collateral consequences for low, in for low level driving offenses which have disparate impacts on low-income residents and people of color. Policies should work to end the cycle of amassing fines, fees, and state surcharges for these offenses that push individuals deeper into poverty. Policies should instead provide opportunities for diversion and restitution that give back to communities through service, encourage safe and legal driving, enhance accountability for those with multiple citations, protect due process rights for victims of unsafe driving, and allow residents continued access to jobs and education. Uh, Madam Chair, the genesis of this particular item really started with the city attorney's office, and uh, we thank the city attorney um, and Mary Ellen Hang and the city attorney's office uh, for their diligent work on this topic. Uh, the city has, for about the last eight years, managed a very successful uh, driving diversion program for uh, people who receive citations in the city uh, for driving after revocation of a license, driving after suspension, and driving without proof of insurance. These tend to be tickets that just amass, um, and they uh, just get repeated ticket after ticket after ticket, and it really was a revolving door. Uh, sometimes people get these tickets because they are being derelict in their responsibilities as drivers. A lot of the time they get them because these are crimes of poverty, and these tickets are just really expensive and onerous to pay. Um, so the city attorney's office and other cities around the state um, uh, uh, created the driving diversion program that allows people who have multiple citations to have their license reinstated while they attend some uh, good citizenship classes, some financial management, good driving practices, things of that nature. They attend classes and then um, commit to a payment plan to pay down their fines and fees and state surcharges, and then their license is reinstated as long as they are in good standing with the program. Uh, the program has been tremendously successful in the city of Minneapolis. There is a 6% recidivism rate for participants who go the entire distance and complete the program. Um, so we, uh, we have been working with the city attorney's office to extend the life of this program. Uh, it was originally a pilot program, so in state statute, uh, it sunsets every few years. And after about eight years, it is clearly not a pilot project anymore. It is clearly a very successful project. Uh, it's in about two dozen other uh, local units of government, uh, cities and a couple counties statewide. So along uh, us and the city of St. Paul and other partners are gonna be working to uh, make that very successful program permanent. In discussions around the codification of that program, we really started to have this larger global discussion um, around how do people get to the point where they need our, our driver diversion program in the first place. And we wanted to take a look at the very narrow issue of um, uh, people who just kind of amass these fines and fees over and over and over. So we have a list of uh, about five policies that we're looking at. I won't get into too many details right now. I'd be happy to, uh, to meet with anyone individually. We're still working on them uh, and finalizing legislative uh, proposals. 
uh, but we're really happy to be working with our partners in the city of St. Paul, as well as the Asset Building Coalition, which represents um, multiple nonprofit organizations and constituent service organizations around the state of Minnesota, as well as prosecutors and defense attorneys. Our goal is to have our residents uh, driving safely and legally, um, and for our residents who um, are the victims of unsafe driving, for them to have a process um, to uh, have their property repaired and to have their, their day in court as well, and to really strike that balance that if uh, someone is committing these violations over and over and over because they're caught in this cycle of, uh, of amassing these fines and fees, and these really are uh, infractions of poverty, we want to address them in, in an appropriate way, and stacking more fines and fees on top of them uh, doesn't really accomplish that. And if someone is driving um, irresponsibly and they're being derelict in their responsibilities, to address them appropriately, to not have every tool uh, be a hammer when there are lots of different nails. Uh, so with that, Madam Chair, I'll stand for questions. of um, the entire package of additions, most of which are um, very uh, technical, uh, other than the one described more at length by Ms. Lesh. So we have this in front of us. Discussion or questions? Council President Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate Ms. Lesh's work on um, my concerns about this um, language. Um, and we did have a presentation from the city attorney's office about this program and the success thereof. But I think it's important also to stress, uh, as someone who uh, every day we have people uh, driving irresponsibly with very long records of doing the very same thing, um, and uh, uh, sometimes property damage to uh, homes, to fences, to um, uninsured or cars, cars where people don't carry collision insurance. That kind of problem with problem drivers is exacerbated in low-income communities as well. If you have a thousand dollar deductible on your insurance, uh, your homeowner's insurance, and somebody takes your fence out, you're out a thousand dollars. So I think the importance of restitution, the importance of people who have ignored or not tried to, you know, use our use the system that's in place. Uh, those people need to be held accountable for their driving offenses. And so I'm glad we have that extra language. So thank you. Further discussion on these changes? I'm not seeing any. All in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And that item is <clears throat> approved. Thank you very much. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, finally, we have time for our federal, state, and local uh, updates, and so I will see if there were any things in particular Mr. Ranieri uh, would like to share with us. Madam Chair, I also ask my staff to help, too. Uh, the legislature opened up on Tuesday. Everyone was sworn in. There is one vacancy in the House because of the vacation of a seat, and that seat will be filled by a special election next month. Uh, the governor has introduced two major pieces of his policies. Yesterday he outlined a bonding bill, and today he outlined a tax bill. The there's not legislative language on either bill. However, there are pretty good summaries. In the, ta in the bonding bill, he wants to spend about $1.5 billion, uh, and in that there is funding for the emergency operations and training facility, $2.5 million. And that bill will be introduced and led by Senator Dietzik. Uh, in the other bill is, is money for the Lake Street and I-35W transit project. It's a joint project with Hennepin County, and there's $25 million proposed in his budget for there. There, uh, there are other projects uh, in the city. Uh, for example, there's some money in the Metropolitan Council for the park board for the park board for regional parks. There's also some funding for some state project improvements on some of the highways and bridges that are owned by MnDOT in our city. And we'll get you the details on that. And also there's some improvements to the University of Minnesota, Minneapolis campus in the, in the bonding bill. There's also $70 million for bridge bonding. Uh, that is an increase over prior years, but it's about $20 million less than what was in the final bill that was uh, not approved in 2016. Uh, so uh, there's also money for housing. Uh, if I remember right, there's a uh, appropriation bonds for uh, housing projects, also money for uh, public housing, and then there's an additional uh, 
some funding that was approved in prior years and now being proposed to be authorized to be appropriated this year. So about over $100 million for housing. So I'm sure that's uh, on the bonding bill. On the tax bill, there's a $30 million increase in local government aid that is very similar to what it was in 2016. And many of the things the governor is proposing in the tax bill we've seen uh, in prior years. And the bill should be introduced hopefully sometime next week. Uh, additional bills, uh, today was the first day bills were introduced. Uh, there were about 29 or 30 in, in the Senate and about 70 in the House. Some of those bills deal with, many of those bills deal with taxes. Uh, the first bills, House File 1 and Senate File 1, deal with Minsure and the health care crisis. And I think there was a bill this morning uh, in the House Tax Committee where the conform federal conformity was approved. And it's my understanding they're going to try and pass it today on the House floor. So uh, lots of activity uh, in both the House and the Senate. We will see more committee action starting next week. The Senate did not have any committee meetings this week. The House had few. Uh, there was one today on civil law and where they talked about uh, the interlock for uh, DWI. And then there was another committee on transportation, I think, meeting now. And then taxes met this morning. But we'll expect more to come in the next couple, couple days. So that's what's happening basically uh, at the uh, at Capitol. In Washington, uh, the, again, the big em emphasis seems to be on health care. And then waiting to see what the president-elect will be doing uh, in the next, after his inaugural. Uh, we are putting together some information regarding uh, impacts could be on the city. So as soon as we know more from Washington, we'd like to make a presentation to the council. And Madam Chair, that's all we have for now. Stand all right. For any, stand for any questions. OK. I am not seeing any questions from committee members. So thank you very much. I know that uh, we're starting a, a large round of activity and lots of expectations for how we're keeping uh, aware and engaged on a lot of topics. Um, and things that we don't yet know uh, what may be uh, initiated. So thank you very much to you and the entire team. Um, and I believe with that, we have concluded with our business for today. Um, we are adjourned. <laughs>